Hello Patriots! This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on the individual verbal meiosis practical that each of you will complete. Before we begin, I want to tell you about how you'll, you, each, you each will be graded on this practical. Um, each of you will be graded on how well you correctly state what is happening in each stage of meiosis, how well you use the correct terminology when explaining meiosis, and how well you pretty much understand the big idea of meiosis and you're able to individually answer some follow-up questions correctly. Okay? So let's go ahead and begin. Just like mitosis, meiosis also undergoes an interphase that includes a G1, an S phase, and a G2 phase. And it's during this time that chromosomes will duplicate, as shown here. The cell will begin to grow. Um, you're going to have some protein synthesis, and pretty much the, the cell will prepare for meiosis. You don't need to specifically show, um, demonstrate this for the practical, but I just wanted to review that before we begin. Okay, let's begin. I just want to make one note that it's really important that throughout your meiosis practical that you state correctly which stage you are on. Okay, so here we go. Um, look, meiosis begins with um, prophase 1, and the first thing that happens in prophase 1 is homologous chromosomes will, f will come together to form what is known as a tetrad. Okay? And in the book, I think there's a term called synapsis that is involved in this. But once again, the first thing that happens is homologous chromosomes come together to form tetrads. Now, what are homologous chromosomes? Well, homologous chromosomes have the same size, they have the same shape, they have the same um, genetic information and the same centromere position. So which two of these are similar? Well, these two are similar. These two are homologous chromosomes due to their size, shape, um, banding, their genetic information, and their centromere position. Okay. So first thing, first thing that happens, homologous chromosomes come together to form a tetrad. How many tetrads do we have here? We have two. Okay, two tetrads. And the reason why they form tetrads, which is the next step, crossing over takes place. Okay? Now, the actual thing that actually happens in crossing over is as these homologous chromosomes are forming, each of these homologous chromosomes are going to be sharing and trading a part of each other, as shown here. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera. Now, why does crossing over occur? Well, it occurs because you want to have more genetic variation. More genetic variation. Okay. Now, for the purposes of this practical, um, you will not need to be exchanging parts like this. But instead, okay, so let's do some movie magic. Boom! There it is. Okay. Now, for the purposes of this lab, when you demonstrate the second step, which is crossing over, I want you to show me that crossing over occurs like this. Okay? And just understand that crossing over or demonstrate that crossing over happens to increase genetic variation. Okay? As so. Okay. The third step is that the nuclear envelope breaks apart, allowing these tetrads to come out. And the last step is that centrioles form spindle fibers. And we talked about how centrioles are forming spindle fibers in the form of uh, microtubules. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and go on to the next step. Usually, prophase one is the is the longest step. Okay, it's really important that as you transition stages, you keep exactly what you have here and move it on to the next um, slide. Okay, so as you can see, I've just I've just went ahead and done that. Okay. In metaphase one, um, tetrads. Okay, once again, terminology here. Tetrads will be arranged at the metaphase plate, and they will line up. So this is all you have to show me here. Okay? Tetrads will line up. Once again, what, what brings them to the metaphase plate? Well, it's going to be those spindle fibers that are from those centromeres. Or not those centromeres, those centrioles. Okay? So metaphase one, tetrads line up. Once again, we're going to move them exactly over as so. In anaphase one, the tetrads 
or the homologous chromosomes, I guess, will separate. The homologous chromosomes will separate to each pool, as so. Okay. Once again, these aren't sister chromatids. These are homologous chromosomes. Okay. Next, just go ahead and slide them over as so. Slide, slide these over, slide these over. And finally, in telophase one, there's two things that happen. The cell begins to elongate, and the nuclear envelopes begin to reform. Okay? That's so. Now we have two daughter cells, okay? as shown here. Okay? It's really, really, really important, and this is where most students will make a mistake, that you transfer what is in this cell right here to its own cell in the next phase, and what's in this cell into the next phase. Okay? Let me show you what that looks like. Give me a moment here as I transition. Okay. So once again, this is in one cell. So I'm going to take the contents of this cell and place it into a, into a cell over here. And then I'm going to take the contents in this cell and then place them in their individual cell as, as shown here. Okay. Once again, these are not together. These are not tetrads anymore. They are now individual chromosomes. Okay? For prophase 2, uh, I want you to tell me that no tetrads are formed. No tetrads are formed, and there is no crossing over that happens here. Okay? And then I want you to tell me that um, the nuclear envelope will go ahead and uh, break apart, and centrioles will form spindle fibers. Okay? Four things once again in prophase 2. Once again, go ahead and move these over. Just over as so. Move these over. Move these over. Okay. For metaphase two, uh, the chromosomes now, I guess you could call them daughter chromosomes, will line up. So, once again, slide them over. Slide them over. Slide them over. Slide them over. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids of each of these respective daughter chromosomes will go ahead and move to each pool, as so. They will pull apart. They will pull apart. They will pull apart. Okay? Once again, as you transition, move the chromosomes exactly where they are to the next stage. Move them first. Move them and move them. Okay. I'm going to transition here. Thank you for your patience as we're doing that. Okay. In telophase two, the nuclear envelope will begin to reform and the cell will begin to elongate. And finally, let's move on to our last stage here. Once again, remember, this is one cell. So the contents of this is going to go into two different cells here. Okay. There it is. Okay. Get it? Take these. And finally, what is our product? Well, our product will look like this. Okay. As you can see, in each cell, you have um, different uh, chromosomes, individual chromosomes. And at the very end, cytokinesis is when the cytoplasms will actually separate. But in the end, I want you to tell me that the result of meiosis is that you um, is that you produce four haploid cells, and these cells, since they are sex cells, we can call them four haploid gametes. Okay, at the very end. Okay. Now, depending on how you separate them during um, metaphase one, it's okay if you end up with a product like this. Okay. Like this. Just ensure that they are separate or like they're, um, and that these two are not connected, but they are separated, and ensure that there is um, two different individual chromosomes per cell. So as long as these two aren't the same, you're good. Okay. If you have any other questions, go ahead and ask your instructor. Uh, but thank you so much for watching.